Hey there. Who wants coffee? Coffee, coffee. Get your fresh hot coffee. Woo-wee. Oh, double-fisted coffee drinker, eh? Okay. Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody. John Smale. Uh, you know, today's episode on Smale's Pace is all about coffee houses back in the day. Sort of the phenomenon of coffee houses. Now, a quick definition of a coffee house is a sort of a, a listening room, uh, not licensed for liquor, uh, mostly open uh, at night only. Uh, some of them were one or two nights a week. Some of them were five nights a week. Maybe some were more. I'm not totally sure of that. I know that Smales Paste was uh, was open during the day for both lunch and for uh, later on for, for the dinner hour. And so that was a bit of an exception. Now, not every coffee house was defined by folk music. Um, uh, my friend Moe Scarlett had a great, uh, <laughs> a great funny observation. He says, if you played guitar, you were pegged as being a folky. But if you played piano, uh, you were a musician. A very, very uh, funny, maybe a bit acerbic uh, assessment of the coffee house of the, of the day. Uh, another, whether it was folk though, or, or blues or bluegrass or, or, or country infused or, or whatever, uh, music then was a hybrid. It, it was a developing form of art. And to me, it was always about the singer songwriter. It was about the song and, and the person who created that song. So that was where I was coming from. Uh, I recall back at the Newport uh, Folk Festival days, uh, Newport, Rhode Island had an, an annual festival and Bob Dylan was sort of the, the darling of the day and Joan Baez, etc., and Eric Anderson and Tom Rush, etc. But Bob Dylan came out with a, uh, with a band with electric guitars and oh my God, the Fuhrer, uh, people wanted to, to kill him. Bob Seger wanted to cut the cord with, a, with an ax. I mean, it was just, uh, it was really something... Uh, the, his band, of course, was the band with Robbie Robertson and, and Levon Helm and, and the boys. And they didn't have folky backgrounds. They, they had rock and roll roots with, uh, as, as Ronnie Hawkins band. And, and uh, they played in London many, many times at, at clubs called, a club called Campbell's. And, and uh, I saw them there when I was a young man in university. Now, when I was uh really really young i used to go to uh, yorkville village in toronto and and there existed about 25 coffee houses you know places like the purple onion and and uh the minor bird and um golly the mouse hole and the penny fire thing and uh they were they were on every section of the street and uh the most famous of course uh and the longest lasting was the riverboat. And uh, the riverboat was run by a character uh, named Bernie Fiedler. And Bernie was a coffee salesman uh, to many of these uh, as aforementioned coffee houses. And Bernie said, hey, I can do this and make more money operating a club. And Bernie had the knack. He had talent. He had the ability to, uh, to book uh, good, solid American touring acts of the day, whether it was Janice Ian or Richie Havens, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, and Canadian acts like Gordon Lightfoot, Bruce Coburn, Murray McLaughlin, uh, you know, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, all, all kinds of musicians. And, you know, I saw Tom Rush there. I saw James Taylor uh, with his first album. I had a... a I had access to that place because my friend John Cavanaugh was the was the young barista there, and uh, and so John gave me access to not only the kitchen but to the to the alleyway where the musicians hung out, and and that's where I booked many an act right there and then, uh, not through an agency but just through the 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 personal relationship between. Uh, the musicians and myself and their managers and that's the way I did things in in those days another favorite place of mine in Toronto uh, was Grumbles and it was a club over on uh, 
Jarvis and Richmond area, and it was run by Neil Dixon and his wife Beth, and and it was uh, really beautifully designed and outfitted and all that. It was like not done on a shoestring like, like uh, like the other coffee houses were, and at that place, uh, Grumbles, I saw a band that was being showcased by Warner Brothers, and the band was Lazarus, and I fell in love with them and booked them and. And about a month later, they came and played, and, and they really never left uh, in spirit or whatever. The band uh, included uh, Billy Hughes, Carl Cassie, and Gary Dye. And, uh, and as I say, their friendship has started then and has lasted through to this uh, present day. Uh, Edgerton's was another club, and it was uh, kind of on the campus of, of Ryerson because it was located at... Uh, Church and uh, Gerard, Church and Gerard Street, and Derek Andrews uh, booked that room, and Derek had uh, varied tastes. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a bluegrass room one night, and then the next night it might be blues, and the next night might be humorous uh, singer songwriters, uh, and over the years it it ev- it evolved. Edgerton's was a licensed uh, room, unlike. Uh, the coffee houses, so it didn't really come under that category, and it went on to become the edge and and, and had uh, rock and roll bands there. In fact, uh, years later, I saw the band The Police there when they were their first mini tour of Canada, when they all had that bleached blonde hair look. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Now there were there were a scattering of other rooms around town. Fiddler's Green was very popular. It, it featured uh, sort of traditional. Celtic and uh, British Isles music, I suppose. Uh, it was run by Grit Laskin and, um, oh golly, 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 Tam Kearney. And another room was um, Shires in North Toronto, and that was run by the legendary uh, Ken Whiteley uh, of the original Sloth Band. And Ken had a, Ken being an eclectic kind of a person in any case, uh, booked eclectic uh, acts ranging from bluegrass to uh, to old-time country to gospel to uh, to jazz to folk you know a, a good mix of things um, now Kingston Ontario had uh, the scarecrow uh, the razor's edge and and bitter grounds and Kingston to this day has still a good uh, listening audience and they they have strong folk roots. Again, uh, Kingston with Queen's University is a university city like London with Western. And so maybe this this personality of, of changing student uh, fresh blood every year um, add, adds a lot to to that cachet of, uh, of, of coffee houses. Now, uh, Ottawa was certainly blessed with great musicians uh, from uh, Bruce Coburn, Sandy Crawley, Bill Stevenson, uh, Colleen Peterson, uh, Richard Patterson, David Whiffen, and uh, I got to see them a lot at at a club called uh, Le Hibou, The Owl, down on Sussex Street, and uh, I love that place, and we we try to be on the same circuit of, of getting musicians happening. Uh, the connections with Ottawa were, were always strong. Uh, there was also Roosters in Ottawa, and uh, golly, uh, and then again in in uh, Guelph area there was the Slaughterhouse, and I think that was Jack Cole, if I'm not mistaken, that ran that. Um, and then uh, I, I did a show on or an episode on Hamilton, and I talked about the Night Two Coffee House, and I talked about Campbell's Coffee House. In Stratford, there was the Black Swan, which I loved. It was the house band was the Perth County Conspiracy, and it always had a, a vibrant mix of um, music, magic, uh, theater, uh, poetry, uh, mysticism, and uh, always enjoyed that place. And they had other acts that played there, of course, uh, like uh, Brent Titcom. I saw there once. Uh, now, in London, Ontario, of course, you know. Like these cities had multiple coffee houses f- to suit different tastes, and and in in London we had of course Smales Pace, we had 
da, 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 the hub coffee house at the university, and and uh, God, the cuckoo's nest. The cuckoo's nest was a little more of a traditional folk club, and as I say, we all got along because we all offered different flavors of of music, and coffee houses like were were springboards, you know, to fame and untold riches. That always gets some laughing in the aisles when you tell that to to folk singers, you know. But uh, that was the raison d'etre, the, the musicians, the music of the day. Uh, coffee houses, I say, w w were not licensed, so that was the, the drawing card. That is a bit of history. Now, I, I just talked about Ontario, and I just talked about sort of my circuit that I traveled around in. But of course, uh, there were coffee houses everywhere, like in Hamilton and Sudbury and... Um, Goose Bay, Labrador, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Winnipeg, Edmonton had a huge scene. Uh, all across Canada, there, were, there would be hundreds and hundreds of coffee houses. And as I say, when the, when the drinking age was, uh, was lowered, uh, that seemed to be the, the death knell to many of these places. And maybe we just moved, we all moved on, as it were. I hope you enjoyed this little, uh, my recollections. I hope my memory has served me a, a bit well today and I haven't, you know, mucked anybody through the mud or anything like that. Uh, let's uh, get together back here again soon. It's always great to talk about uh, my days in, in the world of music. So uh, let's talk soon and uh, pleasure. Bye.